solving simultaneous equations using matrices. So we already have a number of methods for solving simultaneous equations. We can use elimination, we can use substitution, we can use a graphical method, though it's not particularly accurate by hand. Um, but if we had technology, we can use graphs um, to solve simultaneous equations. So we've got an assortment of methods, um, and some are better in different situations, but generally all will work in all situations. So we want to add in a new method uh, today, which is to actually use a matrix method. So any pair of linear simultaneous equations can be re-represented as a matrix equation. So here what I have is a matrix equation that represents two fairly straightforward simultaneous equations. Uh, and let me show you how by expanding out here. So if we expand out the left hand side, row times column, so we're going to get 2x plus 1y. And bottom row times column, so 4x minus 3y and that is equal to 418. And we now have a 2 by 1 matrix equal to another 2 by 1 matrix, so we can simply equate the elements, and so we get that 2x plus y equals 4, and 4x minus 3y equals 18. And so we have two simultaneous equations. Now these are absolutely solvable by elimination, um, and also by substitution. Uh, but here we want to have a look at actually solving these equations in this matrix form. And so it might sometimes be a, a useful uh, solution method, and it certainly is a perfectly valid solution method, to take a pair of simultaneous equations and turn them into a matrix equation in order to then go on and solve. So let's look at solving these. So this is a fairly simple equation of the form AX equals B. This is what we're trying to solve for, X and Y. So we've got AX equals B. So we're going to need to multiply by the inverse matrix on the left hand side so that that becomes the identity and essentially disappears. So we get X equals the inverse of A times B. So again we need the inverse of A. So determinant is negative 6 minus 4, so negative 10 inverse is negative one-tenth, swap that diagonal, make the other diagonal negative. Okay, so we have negative one-tenth, negative three, negative one, negative four, two, multiplied by b, which is four eighteen. Let's do the matrix multiplication. So 2 by 2 times 2 by 1 should give us 2 by 1. So negative uh, top row by column, so negative 12 minus 18, that's minus 30. Bottom row times column, negative 16 plus 36. So, uh, sorry, am I doing that? Yes, negative 16 plus 36, so that's the same as 36 minus 16. Uh, which is 20. Again, that fraction goes in nicely. It won't always. These are This is a nice sample of equations, both in this video and in the previous video. Um, so multiplying by one tenth, negative one tenth, we're going to get three and negative two. And so we've solved for x. Uh, now, remembering here that we're solving simultaneous equations though, so be specific about your answer. So therefore that means that x is equal to 3 and y is equal to negative 2 is the solution to that pair of simultaneous equations. Okay, let's have a look at another one. So here's a pair of simultaneous equations. Uh, we want to first of all convert it into a matrix equation so we can solve the matrix equation. So you need to make sure with your simultaneous equations that the like terms are all lined up, that you've got the x term plus or minus the y term equals any number that's left over. So everything's all okay here. So the square matrix is simply the matrix of coefficients. So 3, negative 1, 5, 2. And we're multiplying those by x and y. And that's going to equal 1 and 20. You should be able to fairly easily and quickly in your head sort of imagine multiplying those back out and checking that they will give you 3x minus y and 5x plus 2. 
Okay, so we've got our AX equals B, which will always be the format you get with solving simultaneous equations. Uh, so we need the inverse of A here to eliminate that, so we'll put the inverse of A here. So we're going to get X equals the inverse of A times B. Okay, so determinant of A is 6 minus minus 5, so 6 plus 5, so 11. And so therefore the inverse of A is 1 on 11. Swap those around, multiply those by negative 1, and there's our inverse. So let's put that in here, 1 on 11, 2, 1, negative 5, 3. And we're multiplying that by B, which is 120. And let's do the matrix multiplication. So 2 by 2 times uh, 2 by 1 should give us 2 by 1. Row times column, so 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 times 20 is 22. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5, plus 3 times 20. So negative 5 plus 60 is, sorry, not negative, positive 55. Again, that fraction goes in really nicely. Uh, so we get 2 and 5, and so therefore answering the equation, the question about the simultaneous equations, there were no matrices in this question to begin with at all, so x is equal to 2, y is equal to 5. Right, one more example. Use a matrix method to solve this pair of equations. So this is where, again, the first thing you need to do is check that everything's all nice and lined up and in the same order. So the first equation is okay. Uh, so we've got 2x minus 4y equals 12. The second equation we need to do some rearranging. So we've got 3x plus 2y equals 2. Now we can convert that to a matrix equation. 2, negative 4, 3, 2 times x and y equals 12 and 2. Okay, so again, AX equals B. We're going to multiply by the inverse to cancel that out. We're going to do the same to this side. So X is the inverse of A times B. So inverse of A, let's work that out. So the determinant is 4 minus minus 12, so 16. Which means that the inverse is 1 on 16 swap those which makes no difference, multiply by negative 1. So we have 1 on 16, 2, 4, negative 3, 2, 12, 2. So we've got row times column, top row times column, so 24 plus 8, is, oh, hang on, sorry, yes, 24 plus 8 is 32. And, uh, sorry, bottom row times column, so negative 36 plus 4 is uh, negative 32. And so 16 goes into both of those, 2 and negative 2, and so therefore x equals 2, y equals negative 2. Right, so some practice, uh, it's really just solving matrix equations and the simplest version of matrix equations. The extra step is just in converting from the simultaneous equations into the matrix equation and then at the end making sure you answer back in the form of the original question. Uh, but otherwise the process is fairly straightforward. Uh, next we'll go on to look at different cases as to what might happen with simultaneous equations. We've looked at three situations here where we get a unique solution, but it's possible in solving two linear equations simultaneously that there isn't a solution or that there's infinitely many solutions. Um, and those will be situations where we have problems with the inverse matrix. So the determinant is going to be equal to zero. So we'll look further at those kind of properties as we move along. But for now, solving some simultaneous equations. Good luck.